Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all-new Geek Pi set-top box kit for the Raspberry Pi 4. This comes in at around $24 on Amazon, and to tell you the truth, I kind of wish it was a bit cheaper. But what this does for the Raspberry Pi 4 is basically move all of the ports to the back, and it actually turns the mini HDMI ports, which are included on the Raspberry Pi 4, to full-size HDMI, which was a big gripe that a lot of people had with the Raspberry Pi 4, including myself. So let's go ahead and take a look at what's included with the kit. It does come with an acrylic case, and personally I'm not a big fan, so I'm going to be covering the top in this 3M vinyl wrap. You can pick this up really cheap on Amazon, and I had some left over from a lot of projects that I've done in the past. And I do have a spot left here that's big enough for the top of this, and that's all I'm going to be wrapping with it. Okay, so this is made by Geek Pi. It's known as the Raspberry Pi set-top box kit. We get some hardware here, lots of standoffs. We also get a 40mm blue LED fan which attaches to the top of the case and blows directly on the CPU and RAM. And they've also included some cheaper aluminum heat sinks here, which should do pretty decently. We have our fan mounting hardware, a small screwdriver, the add-on PCB where all the magic happens, some rubber feet to keep this case from sliding around on the desk, and the acrylic pieces that we need to assemble this with. Now the main draw to this case, at least for me, is adding the full-size HDMI and actually bringing everything to the back of the case. This is the PCB that's included. It's got two full-size HDMI ports and our USB Type-C port. And it keeps that headphone jack around the back. And there's also another little fan header here in case you want to add an extra, but for the fan that's included, I'm going to be running off of the GPIO. Now basically, this just plugs right into the Raspberry Pi 4, and obviously this is only compatible with the Pi 4 because it has to plug into the mini HDMI ports and the USB Type-C on the side here. But once it's assembled, it actually brings all of our ports to the back, and if you mess around with the Raspberry Pi on your desk, you know it can get a bit messy. So this should definitely clean everything up. Now as for the acrylic case that's included, you will have to assemble it, it's super easy, it has the protector on it. And like I mentioned, I'm not a big fan of this acrylic, so I'm going to go ahead and coat the top with that carbon fiber vinyl. Mainly for scratches and cat hair, it just collects that stuff. And this vinyl comes in super handy for pretty much everything, you can get it in any color you want on Amazon. Assembly seems easy enough, it does come with these standoffs. This didn't come with any instructions, but they might have instructions on their website. I'll leave a link in the description if I can find some. This kit does come with a lot of standoffs, and there's two different sizes. So I'm going to grab the base plate, and I'm going to place the smaller standoffs on the Raspberry Pi 4 side. And the longer ones are going to go on the add-on PCB side. We're just going to slide the whole unit right on the base plate here, and we're going to grab the longer standoffs, and that's going to hold everything to the base plate of this case. There's actually two extra nuts that'll go on the side for the Raspberry Pi. There's only four standoffs that'll hold the top on, but the sides make it very secure. So we got the bottom taken care of. It's now time to mount the fan to the top plate or the top half of the shell. Comes with four screws and four nuts, and the fan's going to plug right into the GPIO on the Raspberry Pi. You can go 3.3 volts or 5 volts. It comes with a heatsink for the CPU, the RAM, the USB controller, and the Ethernet controller, but I'm just going to be throwing on the CPU and the RAM heatsink here. These are the cheaper aluminum heatsinks. There's not much meat to them, but with that fan blowing on it, at stock clocks, this should never overheat. And there is a chance that you could at least get a 1.8 GHz overclock out of the setup, but if you do want to go to 2 GHz with the CPU on the Raspberry Pi 4, I would suggest a better heatsink here. And before we mount the top on, we do need to add the sides to the case. I mean, I guess you could just mount the top without these if you wanted to, but they're here, so I'm going to go ahead and install them. I'm going to do the sides of the whole unit first, and then the front and the back. And these are cut exactly how we need them. On the front, we'll have a little slot for a micro SD card. On the back, we'll have the cutouts for all of our ports. And once this is all assembled, we need to plug in the fan and we can mount the top. And when it's all said and done, you'll have something that looks like this. We can easily access our micro SD card from the front here. If you ever need to get to the GPIO pins, there is a little window cut out here. But the main draw, and my favorite part about this whole unit, is bringing everything to the back of the case. We have our USB Type-C, two full-size HDMI ports, a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. We can reach our USB 2.0, USB 3.0, and Gigabit Ethernet from the rear now. I personally could have got by with just a regular fan, but they did include a blue LED fan here. 
So overall, everything does work well here, but I do think it's a little overpriced at 25 bucks. But as you can see, it's definitely cleaned up my desktop area. I no longer have the HDMI and power sticking out of one side. Everything's been moved to the rear. And this case is still small enough to kind of set on the base of your monitor if it can accommodate it. Just cleans it up even more. So that's it for this one. I really appreciate you watching. I really do think this is a cool idea. I love the fact that all of the ports are facing the back now. If you're interested in picking one of these up, you can get them on Amazon. I'll leave some links in the description. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.